Hello, good evening. Welcome to Gospel Nest Weekly Broadcast. Today is Sunday, the 13th September 2020. It's 9 p.m. West African time. I'd like us to start with a prayer. Let's start with a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you once again that you led us through our time with you in worship today. And Lord, you've not limited yourself to time and space. Through the airwaves, you have decided to reach out to us. Tonight, let our time in your presence count. Bless our hearts through your word. We pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. We've been on a series on the assignment, and I like to think that You've, you've really been blessed so far because I have been blessed and I, I don't think it's going to be otherwise for you. Interesting teachings and topics on ministry, the call, excellence, and so on. But tonight, we want to begin a topic I caption Covenant Practices. It's quite unconventional being a topic, but it's something we need to discuss because um, they are part of our Christian experiences and activities. They just come together in a phrase or caption, covenant practices. And so you want to think of what covenant practices are as a, as a phrase Looking at the words that make it up, covenant, it's a kind of agreement all right, between two or more parties that carry responsibilities and then um, there could also be consequences. Okay, so there are various forms of entering into covenant in the scripture, but ultimately, redemption is the covenant we have with God by grace. Hallelujah. So our redemptive covenant is superior to every other covenant. That's what brings us into our status in sonship with the Lord. The mystery of adoption works for us because of the covenant of redemption. Okay? So um, we say covenant practices. What are practices? Activities that are carried out or established on the basis of our understanding of what Jesus did for us. Glory to God. So there are covenant practices all right, for different reasons that I want to try to explain in trying to define them and how they work. Okay, so that today we try to get a grasp on what these practices are about. And then, by the time we'll be meeting on later on within the week, I think on Thursday the 17th of September, all right, 9 p.m. West African time, we'll be looking at the various things that are covenant practice. There are things we are very familiar with. Okay, but um, let's limit ourselves with trying to define them and see how you know, um, they operate, or maybe how they apply, generally, generally speaking. So that by the time we meet on Thursday, we are looking at different individual practices and how they apply. The first thing I want to do is to read a few scriptures to us in Matthew chapter 10, verses 40 following. Um, the Bible says, he who receives you, receives me. And he who receives me, receives the one who sent me. Anyone who receives a prophet, because he's a prophet, will receive a prophet's reward. And anyone who receives a righteous man, because he's a righteous man, will receive a righteous man's reward. And if anyone gives even a cup 
of cold water to one of these little ones because he is my disciple I tell you the truth he will certainly not lose his reward now I want to read Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7 Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7 wisdom is supreme therefore get wisdom though it costs all you have get understanding what, we, what is happening here is that Jesus is giving a paradigm for the actualization of results Jesus is setting the pace he's giving us the understanding of principles and practices that will give us certain results. Yes, he's talking about giving. He's talking about faith. He's talking about receiving. He's talking about honor. All these you'll find in these three verses, 40 to 42 of Matthew chapter 10. And they are significant in their own rights because they constitute what we call, or they consist of the things we call covenant practices. Now, in trying to establish what covenant practices are in life, you discover that Mike Mudok has told us that every problem in life is a wisdom problem. So, there is a wisdom that is required to solve a problem. So the wisdom is peculiar to people and to places, environment, nature, and nurture. The wisdom for solving a particular problem in Africa might apply in Asia, but in a different structure and form. The end results are the same. But the principles follow different channels. And so we're trying to see how these principles, how these practices operate. These are the things we call covenant practices. The wisdom for solving problems. Not, a, not a already an already established wisdom that is common, but an uncommon wisdom for a particular time. It comes from God. They are not practices that are spelt out. Even if they may not be new, but they will come fresh to you. Hallelujah. By the time we go deeply more into those, issues, those areas, of covenant practices you understand better because we'll discuss them and their operations but for night for tonight we're trying to discuss and describe the phrase covenant practices and the first thing we want to see here is that covenant practices are actions taken to enforce God's will in our dealings Jesus died for us. Redemption is complete. All that Jesus died for belongs to us. And we have the rights to them. Do we fold our hands and see those things come into our hands? No. That's not the procedure. That's not the protocol. Otherwise, everyone born again child of God will enjoy and experience redemption at its full so whatever you know is making the difference between this child of god and the other child of god is a function of the revelation they have about redemption hallelujah and this is what we this is where we are so the intention of this discussion is to give you an opportunity to live a distinguished life. 
those who have gone ahead in your career line in the same ministry as you are, they don't have ten heads. There is something they have understood that you have not followed. They have read the scriptures in a way that interprets deep truth that they have worked with and they have evidence. They have lived their lives in evidence. And I believe God that the light of God's word will brighten your minds tonight. So they are actions taken to enforce God's will. Like I said on Thursday, we will look at those actions. How do you enforce God's will? In a family where people don't live above 60, don't get married. Oh, I had an experience recently. And somebody was asking for prayers. Because the person had said, Please, Pastor, pray for me. I'm making an effort to get a degree. But my father had told me that of all his siblings in their family lineage, that the father was the first to get up to a secondary school and could not even finish. Now she had, she is through with secondary school and is about writing professional exams to be able to secure admission into a higher institution or a tertiary institution. And somehow it just came to me, I saw her Get ready, you'll be part of the next university admission. And she said, Amen. That's why I've come here, sir. I need you to pray for me because nobody gets there in my family. I said, Wow, no wonder God put the word in my mouth. And I said to her, It is already spoken. Go and thank God at the altar. Go to the altar and thank God. How do we enforce God's will in such circumstances? There is a way to get God's will to be done. It's an understanding for you that you're a covenant child of God and that there are actions that heaven will legitimize that concerns you. Those are the actions we call covenant practices. The second thing is that there are strategic positions that enact redemption. Redemption benefits when the tides of events seem to go contrary. Sometimes in life, it's as if life fights back. However, you know as a child of God that you carry that there are redemption benefits. There are benefits of redemption. In Revelation chapter 5, Chapter 5, I think, verse 9. Yes. Revelation chapter 5, verse 9. And they sang a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals because you were slain and with your blood you purchased men for God from every tribe and language and people and nation you have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God and they will reign on earth look at verse 12 in a loud voice they sang worthy is the lamb who was slain why was he slain to receive power to receive wealth, to receive wisdom, to receive strength, to receive honor, to receive glory, and to receive praise. Who is he receiving these things for, for us? They are benefits of redemption. Alright? But have every child of God entered into these benefits? No. 
there are things that they do not know. They have lived in ignorance. May God give you light tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. When things go contrary, you can get things to work for you. Number three, they are not arbitrary or impulsive fleshly guided actions, but spirit inspired. Covenant practices are spirit inspired actions. They are not just arbitrary, they are not just flesh guided. They, somebody may have carried out a particular action that worked for him in the past, but you have to be inspired to follow that action and see it work for you. They are faith actions that produce desired supernatural results. In a sense, faith is actually one of the covenant practices. But in this context, we're talking about responding to this faith with works that produce desirable and desired results supernaturally. Covenant practices are high spiritual weapons that subdue satanic devices and counter their oppositions on our blessings. Wow. Their spiritual weapons subdue satanic devices and counter their oppositions on our blessings. There is the blessing of God for you, facing you, waiting on you, but there is opposition. How you respond to clear opposition of the way, hallelujah, is all we're talking about. And then finally, when we engage in covenant practices, we release the superior wisdom of Christ to hasten the appropriation of God's will. Do you know that there are things that have been ordained for you, but they are not coming to you. You know why? There is a wisdom you are lacking. Every battle in life is won by a superior wisdom. Someone met David and said to him, Ah, I want to go with you. And David said, no. Why not follow my son Absalom? He said, no, you are the one I want to go with. And then he said, don't worry. If you stay with me, you'll be of no use. But with the wisdom upon your life, just go join Absalom so that you'll be able to counter the counsel of Ahitophel because Ahitophel is already with Absalom. And I know that because he has worked with me for years, any counsel he gives to Absalom will be to our disadvantage. But may God use you. And so David sends him, and then Absalom said, you, you left your guy, how come you are with us? He said, no, you are the one that God has chosen. And so when Ahitophel gave his wisdom on how to overcome David, this young man raised his hand and said, no, your father is a man of war. If we go like this, he will overcome us. This is the strategy I think will work best. And Absalom said, I think you're right. Ahitophel killed himself because his counsel was not taken. But his counsel was actually what was right. All right? But God is knows David to raise a superior wisdom of sending out this guy so that the conspiracy of Ahitophel will fail. There is a superior wisdom that hastens God's plan for your life. Something that the enemy would want to pro prolong for 20 years can be shortened with, to happen in 5 years or in less than 5 years. It's about discovering that wisdom, that action you must take what you need to do. And that's what I'm asking the Lord to help you tonight to discover. I want to pray with you. As we reserve the remaining discussion to Thursday, 17 September. Let us pray. Lord, shine your light in our lives. 
give us wisdom, superior wisdom, and help us to know what to do at the right time to achieve the desired results. Now, for anyone that is connecting tonight, hearing here and later on, that is struggling with a wisdom problem, and he say, Pastor, I believe what you're saying, but how can I manage this situation? Lord, show them what to do. And Lord, let what they do not just be an addition to what Jesus has done, but let it be a complement to actualize all that Jesus has done in our lives. And for those who do not know you, give them opportunity, Lord, as they confess their sins tonight, that you have mercy on them. Thank you for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Beloved, you are blessed. I'd like to see you tomorrow in our daily meditation, 6 a.m. West African time. God bless you. Stay tuned on all our um, daily meditations and weekly broadcasts. Stay tuned also on all our social media handles at Gospel Nest. Shalom.